All right, guys, good to see you again. We're going to be working on finding the area of bounded regions on a graph. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through this work through or through this, these notes, basically. Um, first, we're going to graph the line that they tell us to. Remember that this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So when we go to the actual graph, we're going to start at y equals 6 on the y-axis. And we're going to apply the slope of negative 2. That means we go down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, and we draw that line. I'm not going to spend too much time describing how to graph the lines. We're going to see that a lot throughout these. You do need to know how to do that. Make sure you come and get help if you can't do that. It says, what is the area of the region in the first quadrant? So we're only talking about the first quadrant and below that function. So essentially, we're talking about this space, which forms a right triangle. The base would be 3, the height would be 6, and we're just finding the area of that right triangle. It'd be 1 half times the base, 3, times the height of 6, and that area would be 9. That's all she wrote. That's a, a pretty straightforward question. Let's try another one. Um, I'm going to remind you real quick of something called Hoivux. Hoivux um, helps me kind of remember some of the things that people forget real often. This is horizontal lines have zero slope and are y equals equations. Vertical lines are undefined slopes and they have x equal equations. So y equals is going to be a horizontal line. X equals is going to be a vertical line. Hoivux. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell or something. Um, I forgot what they're called. Some of something class. They, oh, no. It's called the, 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 the Crucivex, the Koivux. I don't know. Something in Harry Potter. I don't remember. Oh, no. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. So when we say Y equals zero, hoi, horizontal, at zero. So there's a horizontal line at Y equals zero. Let's change colors, make it a little easier to see. So horizontal line at Y equals zero. A vertical line at x equals 0. We have a vertical, vux, vertical line at x equals 6. And then the line y equals 1 third x plus 3. So we start at 3. We go up 1, right 3. Up 1, right 3. And we're going to have a lot of perfect intersections. I'm not going to make you work too hard on the intersections, although that won't always be the case in future classes. And what is the bounded region? What is the region in between all of those boundaries? That's this shape, and that's a sideways trapezoid. Our trapezoid has bases of 3 and 5. So remember that the, that the area of a trapezoid is the average of the bases. So 3 plus 5 divided by 2 would be the average of the bases. How do we know those are the bases? Those are parallel lines. The bases must be parallel, and the height must be perpendicular to the basis, in this case would be 6. So the average of the basis would be 4 times 6, the area is 24. Okay, the next two are very similar questions to the first two. I would want you to try to do these before you watch me. So if you're really trying to learn how to do this, attempt this and then watch the video. So hit pause, try to do number three and number four, and then come back. Um, but let's do number three. So y equals negative 5x plus 10. So we're starting at 10. We're going down 5 over 1, down 5 over 1, and we're going to connect those. And it's in the first quadrant again. So we know that it's this right triangle in the first quadrant. It has a base of 2 and a height of 10. So that is 1 half times the base times the height, which is just 10. So the area of that triangle would be 10. The next one's a little trickier, especially the way they described it to us. If you didn't know what this meant, um, this is basically we have a wall at x equals 4 and a wall at x equals 9. We're going to be in between 4 and 9. We can't be left of 4. We can't be right of 9. That's what that's telling us. So let's get everything graphed, though. The first one is y equals 2x. So that's a y-intercept of 0, and we're going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2. I'm not going to keep doing that. But it's up 2 over 1 for a long time. I don't know how long it needs to go. I'll bring it to there. 
it needs to go farther, we can figure that out later. At, and then we have x equals 4. We hit hoi vux vertical at 4. And hoi vux vertical at 9. Oops, so I do need to go a little bit more here. Boom, there we go. And so the space we care about would be this space. Remember, it has to be more than 4 but less than 9. Not this over here. So we don't really care about this over here. As a matter of fact, if you want, you could just draw starting at 4. This is the space we care about. So we have two bases. The bases would be 8. And this one's real tall, 18. And then the height would be from 4 to 9 would be 5. So another trapezoid would be the average of the bases times the height. That would be... 65. The average of the bases would be 13. 13 times 5 would be 65. There you go. 5 and 6, the, it, they're, sorry, 5 and 7 are going to be a significantly bigger challenge. Let's look at number 5. It says y equals, and these are level 4 questions. These types of questions do show up on the SAT. Um, we'll talk about it more probably on Friday, but the SAT version is really a level 5 because there is an added challenge that we'll talk about later. But for right now, let's look at this. Y equals 1 half X plus 6. So we go to 6. It's up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Y equals 1 half X plus 6 would look something like that. Y equals 7 halves X would be up 7 over 2. We already got that spot right there. And then y equals 3 halves x be up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2. I'm going to keep that party going, something like that. And so the shape that we're looking at is this red triangle. This is a hard question. This is not, I mean, most people are not getting this correct. So let's talk about a few things that make it tough. So first... Quick timeout. Let's just talk about obtuse triangles. If I have an obtuse triangle, oh dear, what is going on? There we go. Where's the height? Remember, heights have to make a right. No rights, no heights. So let's say that this blue side is my base. The height, I need you to hear this clearly is the perpendicular distance to the opposite vertex. It's not this. No, it's not that. That's not perpendicular. The height is the perpendicular distance. In other words, it's going to be over here. So like if this distance was 8 and this distance is 6, then the area would be 1 half times 8 times 6. Guys, if a triangle is obtuse, automatically like more than half the kids in our country would miss the question because it doesn't make sense in people's head for the height to be outside the shape. But you can measure how tall something is without being inside the shape. What is height? It is the perpendicular distance to the opposite vertex. I need you to remember that because that's going to come into play here. This is an obtuse a, a triangle. So right off the top, more than half the students in our awesome country are going to miss this. Also, there's no vertical or horizontal sides. We can count vertical and horizontal distances, right? Like vertical, we could count it, eight. Horizontal, we could count it, five. But could we count a diagonal or slanted distance? No. And that's all we got here. So we have to come up with some separate different strategies to make this work. Um, there's more than one way to do it, but the way I'm going to kind of talk about right now is cutting it into smaller obtuse triangles that we can work with. What we want to do is draw horizontal lines that hit intersections perfectly if possible. And for this class this year, you'll always be able to hit an intersection perfectly. It lowers the difficulty a smidgen when we do that. So what would I do? Would I draw a horizontal line? Like here's a horizontal line. That's not a good one. It does start at a vertex. We do want to start at a vertex. But guys, that's not a clean spot. We could figure it out if we wanted to, but... It would require more work. That's not a good option. If we go to like this vertex, we can't hit the triangle anywhere, so I'm not doing that. Same thing here. Horizontal, vertical, can't hit the triangle. So really, the only spot we have left is this vertex again, 
And if we go straight down, we do have a clean hit. This green line we can count is four units long. And what we have are two separate triangles. We have an orange side. And let's focus on that for a second. So it's an obtuse triangle. I get it. It's tough to see. If four, if green is your base, the height, what do we say height was? Height is the perpendicular distance to the opposite vertex. Here's the orange vertex. What is that perpendicular, in this case, horizontal distance? If the green is vertical, we're looking for the horizontal distance to the vertex. And that would, oh, that would be two. So the orange section is one half times base times height, which would just be four. So that's the orange side. That's the area of all this. Well, what about the other side? We'll make it purple. What about the purple side? Once again, we have a base of four. We need to know the horizontal. It must be perpendicular. So in this case, horizontal distance to the opposite vertex. And that would also be four. So the purple situation is one half times base times height or eight. Add those together, and the overall area is 12. So if you do purple plus orange, you get the original triangle that we were looking for. That's not the only way to do it, but that's certainly a good strategy. All right, let's take a look at this one. We've got x equals 0, hoi vux. x is the vux part, vertical y equals 1 half x plus 1. So we start at 1. We go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. We could keep doing that all day long, but it's going to look something like this. And then we have negative 2 thirds x plus 8. So we're at 8. We're going to go down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. Oh, sorry. Ah, stop. Something like this. And so we're looking for this blue enclosed. It's called the bounded region. This is the space that is bounded by all three of those. We're looking for this triangle. Well, it already has a vertical side. That's awesome. So we have a vertical height, a vertical number of seven. And then, so we'll actually we can call that the base if we want. If that's the base, what is the vertical? Oh. That one is vertical. What is the horizontal distance to the opposite vertex? It's going to be 6. Now, this one is an acute triangle, so that height would actually just be right inside if we wanted to draw it. A little bit easier to visualize there. But it is 6. So this area is 1 half times base times height, and that would be 21. All right, one more on here. It's a lot like number five. I would hit pause and see if you can do number seven. See if you can do this question without my help. I'm going to work through it right now, though. I'm going to graph the three equations. Negative one-half x plus 12. Down one over two. Down one over two. Down one over two. Something like that. Negative one-half x plus 12. Y equals X. That's just starting at zero. That's up one over one, up one over one all day. One third X plus two. So up one over one, two, three. Up one over one, two, three. It's going to be this line. Up one over one, two, three. Right there. Okay. So the bounded region is this green triangle. And again, it's a lot like number five. There are no vertical sides. There are no horizontal sides. We're going to have to find a good line to draw. From this vertex, there's nothing. I can't hit the triangle, not vertically and horizontally at least. From this vertex, oh, I do have a good choice there. 
from this vertex, nothing horizontally, but vertically, yes. So which one's better? Well, let's say you chose this one. It hits the side, but is that a nice clean hit? No. I would have to do some more math to figure out how long that line is. It's one, two, three, and then a little bit more. I don't know what that little bit more is. Um, so I'm going to leave that one alone. Don't like it. What about over here? If I draw this horizontal line, ooh, that's a clean hit. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a horizontal line that's length six. So if I work on the top part, the brown part, what is the distance and the perpendicular distance to the opposite vertex? Well, this one's actually inside the triangle, so that one's not too bad. So the brown situation is one half times two times six, which would just be six. Okay, and then let's go purple over here. What is the perpendicular distance to the purple vertex? How far is it? That would be a perpendicular distance of three. It's not inside the triangle, but we need the perpendicular, or in this case, vertical distance. So that's going to be plus one half times three times six, which would be nine for an overall answer of 15. All right, guys, I hope we understood this situation. This is from today's notes.